Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the second day to Android Workshop. Let me just start my session now. Okay. So these are some projects we have already imported. I mean, don't worry what all this. You, you know, during the sessions, you will get introduced to each and every project. I will, what I'll do is, I will start creating a new project for you. So this is my Eclipse IDE. And where I'm going is just file, new. Android application project. So I have clicked on Android application project. So now it asks me application name. So I am saying, uh, say, a starting point. Yeah. Then the, here is a package name. Package name is nothing but a namespace for your project. You must have already accessed a lot of uh, classes in Java. Uh, you know, which says uh, like com dot some package name dot the class name. You need to import that in order to, you know, if you are using some functionalities in your code, you need to import corresponding packages. So it's, it acts like a namespace for you. Then there is a minimum required SDK, the target and compile with SDK. So basically this minimum required SDK, you should always keep the minimum one which is available, which your SDK supports. The target SDK, better keep it the maximum version which is available uh, in your SDK. And the compile with version uh, is nothing but your program will get compiled with this version. So here instead of this, uh, I'm sorry currently I don't have any version other than 4.2, I will show you a little later. But I'm just compiling it in with 4.2 which is available with my Eclipse ID right now. I'll go to next. This just says a create a custom launcher icon, create activity, create project in workspace. Yes, everything should be clicked. We don't need any other things. Then next would be a custom launcher icon, I guess. Yes. So if you want some, you know, custom icon for your application. So basically, what is this custom launcher icon? This icon, I mean, when you are, you will install your application uh, on the device or even on the emulator, the picture representation, what you see would be this. I mean, if you click on this icon, then your application will open. If you want any other image, you can just go ahead and have it. Then it says a create a blank activity. Now I'm just renaming this activity. What happens generally is if you keep it as a main activity, there will be a lot of other people with whom you must be sharing a device. So, you know, the all applications will be a main activity. So it is diff difficult to segregate until and unless you don't explicitly change your app name in string.xml. So it's better if you just give your activity some unique name so that you will understand it, that this is your activity. I'm just simply saying finish. So now this will create a complete Android project for me. This takes a little bit time for you. Now it will have the all those uh, project structure what Nilesh showed you yesterday. So let's just open it and check out what all it has. It is like, you know, like a project structure which is uh, segregated based on some, uh, uh, based on some things, right? For example, under layer, under uh, resources, you will have your drawable folder, you will have your layout folder, which deals with a UI which deals with a lot of resources in your project. You have SRC folder there, there it would be a complete Java code, your multiple Java files if you want to have, because there can be a multiple activities in your application. So SRC folder will hold all your Java code. So here we are, it opened me a .xml file for me, but let's just check out the folder structure first. So this is our folder, the starting point, right? This is our folder starting point. Forget about the rest all projects. There are a lot of projects already available. They might, it might confuse you. Please try to concentrate on this project. So this is a starting point. As I told you, there's a, here is a SRC folder. What it does is, let me just expand this for you. Yeah, great. So under this SRC, you have your package and you have your Java activity, which you created starting point activity. After that, you have some system generated file. It's better. You should not play with this file. There is there should be a R dot and build config Java. You these are system generated resources file. You you should not touch it. Now this is the Android 4.2. I mean this is what is the magic lies basically. 
the all classes, the all packages would use, you, will, you will be able to see here. And that's why SDK is so handy to use. Then there would be assets folder where you can put your lot of resources. Then a bin. Some, someone ha had asked question yesterday, where can we get our dot apk file? So this is the folder you will get after compiling, not just like that. So this is a bin folder. And uh, then next, what we have is a resources, which is an important folder. I mean, I'm not going into detail because later you have a complete session on this resources. So you can basically have your images, your audio, video if you want to play. So you can have it here. Then there is Android manifest file, which is kind of controller file, which decide, which decide a lot of things for your application. Different permissions, which activity should be a main activity, which means a main class uh, from which your application will start. So these all things are controlled by the .xml file. So as a developer, what you should be aware about is basically a three files. First is .java. The second would be under your layout, that is your graphical. How your, once you open your application, how your application will look like. And third is a manifest file. In case your application needs some extra permissions or some extra things to be done. So what I'll do is I'll just try to show you this dot xml first let me expand yeah so be, so by default my activity will look like this a simple hello world it has uh, yeah what i have done is i have simply created one android application project called starting point all right under starting point i am somewhere here under res under layout i am at activity starting point dot xml this is nothing but a UI of my application. If you see at the left palette, there are a lot of widgets available. These are some form widgets, then text fields, layouts, the composite widgets like grid view, scroll view, images and media. There you have image view, image button, gallery, media controller, then date picker you have. There are lots of widgets available. I mean, you can see how rich the Android UI is. So what we will do is, I'm not doing any coding. I'll just, so, I'll just show you simply what happens when a default application is getting run on the device. So what I'm doing is, I'm going on project, run as Android application. See, if you have your SDK configured properly, then you should able to follow these steps what I'm doing. So simply create Android application project Na uh, just rename your activity, run the project. That's, that's all I'm doing. No, nothing, any, you know, great rocket science I'm doing here. So let's just see how your activities will look like. What we will do is we will see first how default activity looks like. And then we will do a little bit of coding. I'll just have a button and I'll just change this hello world to something else on click of the button. Simple. Yeah, and someone had question yesterday whether all these demos, uh, everything, will, will it work on Windows? I mean, this is the answer. I'm on Windows. Yeah, so finally, it's saying that installing starting point APK. Let me just open console for you. So it's now saying installing starting point APK. So basically, this was the reason why we recorded our videos and we were trying to show you yesterday because running on the device every time it takes time it you know consumes your time and we don't want to waste our so much time in just simply running the application that's why we had recorded our videos when we were trying to show you that okay how the co what the code is required how the output would be okay i'm not sure whether you will be able to see this hello world or not but if you see here is a starting point by activity name and this is a hello world if I go to a menu, I go back. Hmm. Yeah. So this is my emulator's home screen. I'm just clicking on menu. Yeah. If you see, I'm saying OK. If you see, here is my program. Here is my application. Do you remember that custom launcher icon it was showing on the right side? It just 
uh, it just took that icon and it has given me, I mean the name is the starting point and the icon is the same, I haven't changed that icon. And when I open the icon, open the application, it says hello world, simple. What we will do is, let's go to our XML again, this is my XML, so it has two ways to do it. One is a graphical layout, so simply drag and drop whatever you want, another is .xml file. So here is my XML file where it, it is, you know, I just under a relative layout, so this is all a system generated code, I haven't written anything, I did everything in front of you, so I haven't written anything, it's just a simple system generated code and by default it has given me a text view, okay, so where that hello world is getting displayed. So by default it has just only given me a text view, what we will do is we will have a button and on click of that button we will simply change the text of text view, that's it. So I am again going in my, I am going in my graphic layout, just let me zoom it for you, hope it's better. Then let me just drag and drop a button over here, I will just drop it down. So if you see, I mean the editor is so cool, you can just do, you just need to drag and drop. And obviously if you need a very perfection in the uh, coordinates, then definitely go for the XML file. So what we will do is, let me just say control S, I am again going to my dot XML and if I, now I have dragged and drop one button. So if you see, now I have in my XML a button, alright, along with the text view, I have a now button. So what I will do is, I will just change its ID. So using this ID, you can basically refer this in your code. So button click, okay, and the text which is visible on button is button. So let me say click me, okay, so I have just simply changed its text, so let me just close this, now the actual thing starts which is our Java code. So I am going in my SRC, my package, my starting point activity dot Java, okay. So this is again a system generated code, it has given you already an activity to start with. As I mentioned, as a lot of people mentioned yesterday, as a developer, what first you will encounter is an activity. Because activity is something where user interacts and we are talking about a touch screen environment here. So this is a something, a basic block which will be, basic programming block which you will use almost in all applications. So the, you know rest all services, content provider, that depends on whether your application requires it or not. But activity is something you will always require. So it has just two simple methods and this is the starting point. So this is the on create method, if you remember the activity life cycle yesterday, there was a starting point of on create. So this is where activity will start. What we will do simply here is, I will just say text view, say txt view equal to, I am just typecasting it, then the, yeah, this dot, sorry, this dot, there is a method find view by id. So I am not sure whether it will be visible for you, but if you just, if you see, here is the second method, find view by id, where what I will pass is, I am just trying to get the reference of that text view, where hello world is displayed right now. I want to change that text, so definitely I need the reference of it. So how I will get is, r dot id dot, okay, id dot, it has still not given me, let me just go to my XML and check whether I have saved it or not. Ah, text view, so that's fine. Oh, the issue is it does not have an ID attribute, that's why I cannot access it. So I have to have an ID attribute for text view in order to access it. So I am just changing it to txt view, fine. So I have simply added an ID attribute so that I get handle of this and I can change the text using uh, in my code. Let 
let's go back to dot java file yeah so let me uncomment my code text view this now you, we should get it ideally dot okay now you see there are two, two things coming up btn click which is my button and txt view which i just now gave all right so now if you see there is something red line coming up it says that yeah so if you just even hover on this word where the error is it shows you what all quick fixes are available so it says import text view android widget so what happens in my import is i get this new statement import android dot widget dot text view so whenever you are using a code it will i mean whenever you are using any class which needs to which is not there already imported so it will just definitely direct you that okay you need to import it which is very cool thing you don't need to remember that you know okay i am using a text view which package i have to import i don't need to remember it so i have a text view reference what one more thing we can we have to do is i said that on button click we will change the text so let me go back to xml and yeah so what we will do is we will add on click method here so i'm saying android colon see all right it went so we have two methods to do it we'll get, go for on click and i'll say change text that's it and obviously if you understand i am just calling this method on on click so i have to define this method in my java file then only it makes any something some sense right so what we will do is we will go to our java file we'll have one method say public void i said change text okay and i need this statement inside this basically it's not required in my main method i'm just what i see simple i need to do is on click of the button i need to get reference of my text view i need to change the text that's it simple pretty simple i have already defined a method on on click now in the click method i am just writing a code so yeah so what we have to do is txt view dot there should be method of set text set text yes it is yeah i am just changing it to starting point so if you see let's go to the xml back where what we have is i had said change text yeah let me just say a c capital over here and that's it i have simply defined this method in in my java code let's see whether the magic works or not so let me just run this application again so there were two emulators basically open two avds so which un unnecessarily will consume time again so let's see how how our activity will look like now so if you see on a console it will again start showing you the, the that it's it has installing has started so these are i mean important windows for you one is a console which tells you what activity is happening another is a log cat so if any error occurs there the error would be in a log cat if any exception occurs it would be in a log cat so this is a important window i mean definitely there are a lot of things which i am trying to show you and it's difficult to grasp the all of these things at a time but just understand the basic procedure for right now so that you know at least throughout the session what you can concentrate on is rather than you know what is the basic better concentrate what is there in android okay because you can go back and try out all these things on your own this is very simple you must be able to understand now this is how simple it is 
So just try to concentrate what is there in Android, what is stored in Android, which, which makes it so cool. So this is how now we have a button and on click of this, great, some exception has occurred. So let us check out what is the exception. Let me just expand logcat for you. Could not find method. Aha, all right. So it says now exception illegal state could not find the method change text bracket my view, right? So what mistake I have done in my code is I did not pass the parameter view in change text. I mean this is a syntax for it. I just missed it, so it gave me exception. So again it is telling me to import a view. So yeah, so this is done, right? So we have a now correct method. I will I uh, want to tell you there are several ways to implement this on click method, okay? One is this way which I shown you showed you. There are various others which you know later on in session would be shown to you. One is an anonymous inner class where in a code itself you write that you know that button dot on click listener you implement a listener in a code itself that with that i mean i personally feel the code becomes little bit difficult so i don't want you to you know be uh, get that difficulty in a first program itself so i just made it simpler for you but definitely there is a one drawback of using this way which i have done is what it does is on click wherever you write the method name it searches in a corresponding activity okay and if it doesn't uh, only in corresponding activity if you want to call any method of some different activity it won't it's not possible but it is possible using that on click listener which you know other presenters will show you soon let's just check whether our application is successful or not So now let me rerun my project and let us see, yeah, so I have my activity again, a click me and hello world. So yes, it worked. I hope you can see that the text has been changed to starting point, right? So this is what it is, a simple application. What I will take a few minutes to do is, I will try to show you the same application on device, the our Akash tablet. I mean, where is APK, how to install it, I would just like to show you, just give me a couple of minutes and then we would be done with my session at least. So if you let me go to my workspace which is on, yeah, which is on desktop. which is on sorry desktop then akash workspace starting point so if you see this is what the project structure it was showing in our eclipse id so all the folders everything is available so i am going inside bin and now i have see starting point dot apk which was not there initially i had shown you in ide also it, it was not there okay so here is my tablet yeah. So now what I have is a this, a connector, a USB connector, okay. This is a USB connector. I am just inserting a pen drive in this connector and the second, the other part I will just insert in this port, USB port. So let us just see whether our USB has been mounted or not. Yes, it says SD card mounted. So I have gone to my file manager application. This is a default application, okay? So if you see, there are a lot of things available. This is the internal memory of a tablet. If you have an external SD card inside, inserted in the tablet, so this is the folder where you will get all data. And third is the pen drive, which is not detected till now. So looks to be a connector issue. I will ask my next presenter to show you the installation on the device and she will, she will show you how to install. It is pretty simple procedure. I had inserted pen drive. I showed you where the data would be available. Just go to that .apk file, 
click on it, it will ask, it will give you a dialog box whether you want to install. So if you click on install, it will start installation, that is it, that, it is as simple as that and after finishing installation, it will give you a dialog box open. So if you click on open, the application will open. I mean it is pretty simple straightforward procedure, you do not even need, actually I do not need to even show you that and this is it for from this session.